Well, hello everyone. Welcome to The Path TV. We are Philip and Laura Baker, and as always, thank you for spending some time with us. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to get along, uh, get, get a little further down that path. You say, what path? The path to a great marriage. It's not a destination. We've been saying it for so long. A great marriage. It's not a destination. It's a journey. It's a path, and that's what The Path TV is all about. We want to get a little further along that path. And we're not just talking about you guys. We're talking about us too. No marriage is perfect. No husband is perfect. No wife is perfect. There's no couple that's got it all together. No one has arrived. But praise God, we've all left. And so uh, we're going to have a good time today. And I'm really looking forward to, to getting into some things today. Well, I like what we're going to talk about. Because what we're going to talk about is, um, you know, in churches, we, you know, we do a lot of marriage conferences. We do a lot of... Uh, of this in churches and we always have people young people that are come up they're dating they're engaged they're mm -hmm. fixing to get married they just got married and they'll say you know what what's the key you know give us give us your piece of advice on you know how to have a happy marriage how to have a long marriage yeah, what's the a, one thing you yes. would tell us and you know I, I love that but I just noticed when I was we were doing this I just noticed that it's always the young people, it's always the newlyweds, it's always the ones that are fixing to get married that ask that. It's not some couple that's been married for a long time. It's not a couple, yeah. and I don't, I don't know, is it, is it pride? Is it, you know, you don't want someone to know uh, that there might be something going on in your marriage or you want to feel like, you know, the pride, I, we, we know, we've got it. You know, one of my favorite things to do though is when you see those little couples, and I've done it in a restaurant before, you see a little couple and they're sitting there and they're, in their 80s, mm -hmm. you know, and and they're talking, you know, when you find the ones that are talking to each other, and they're talking, you go up to them and you say, "What? What's your key? How long have you been married? And what what is what? What would you tell me? I still want to know." Yeah, I mean, we've been married as we're recording this, going to be 34, 35 years, 35. 35? Uh, yeah, somewhere there. I think, <laughs> I think it's 35, 35 years, but we know we haven't arrived. I know I haven't arrived. We are all, we're constantly, and Philip just said it, this is as much for us as it is for y'all. And so we're constantly growing. We're constantly learning new things. But I love to hear what those couples say. Yeah. You know, when they've made it 60 years, 50 years, uh, we had a couple in, in, our, in our, one of our seminars, and they got up there, well, we're celebrating 65. Whew. I just felt like we needed to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to say, you got this, we'll sit down. Because we can never stop growing. And it's not a it's not a weakness to ask, because I want to I want to learn from you. I want to learn from you. I want to learn what other people what what secrets what what advice they have to give. Because sometimes what happens is you get so involved in life that even though you know what to do, because if I said something, you go, yeah, I know that. So we're not going to give you things that you probably don't know. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you things maybe you have forgotten. Yeah. Or maybe you're not implementing. You know, when you have children, you know, there are things that you tell them <coughs> not to do because you know it's better or yeah. to do because it's good for them. But, you know, they have to make their own choice. And just because they know to do it doesn't mean that it gets done. Okay, let's give an instance. What about when you they know that they can't go anywhere in our home, don't go anywhere until your room is clean. Okay, but they'll come down and go, hey, can I, daddy, 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 can I go, da, da, da. And if daddy doesn't say, is your room clean? Their room may not be clean and they would go. My point is, just because you know something doesn't mean you do it. Yeah. You may know these things we're going to talk about, but maybe you've let it slide to the back burner a little bit. Maybe you've forgotten it's important. You know, maybe it's something that God's kind of reminding you of. Hey, hey, he's tapping you on the shoulder. Hey. Remember, remember, this is important. Remember to do this. Hey, I'm giving you a heads up. Amen. Amen. You know, in these next couple of uh, episodes, we want to talk about this amazing word that we're all familiar with, but maybe it's a word that we need to dig into a little bit more because i tell you what, we sure need it in the hour we're living in. It's that word wisdom. Come on, uh, what name in the Bible is synonymous with wisdom? Come on, you know, who is the wisest man, you know, to ever live, you know? Uh, his name was Solomon, you know, and he wrote, he wrote the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. He was just an incredible man and full of wisdom. 
And, you know, it really kind of began right there in 1 Kings, the third chapter. You know, he was, he was a young man. His dad had died. He had the entire nation resting on his shoulder. He had all that responsibility. And, you know, the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, ask what I shall give you. And we know what Solomon asked for. He could have asked for riches and honor and the life of his enemies. He, you know, he could have been real carnal in that moment, but he asked for wisdom. He asked for what he needed most in order to help people. And I think we're in a time in our life, especially if you want to have a great marriage, where we need to be asking for wisdom. We need to be defined by wisdom. Our decisions need to be coming out of a place of wisdom. We, we really need to embrace that word. And, and the, the dynamic today is wisdom is chased. We got to chase it. Got to chase wisdom. Wisdom is chased and it's celebrated in a great marriage. And so we want to talk about that word today. And what I thought might be fun is to uh, just kind of look back over the years and, uh, and say, Okay, what are some pieces of wisdom that we've gotten? You know, from other people, things the Lord has shown us, just little pieces of wisdom. They may not flow together, you know, they may be a little detached from one another, but they're just little pieces of wisdom that has stuck with us over the years. That's been a, that's been a benefit to us. And it's just something for you to think about. It's something for you to ponder. And, uh, and, and decide if it's something, if it, is it a piece of wisdom that you want to add uh, to your repertoire, add to y'all's foundation of a marriage? And, and of course, you know, I, I, I love the Word of God. James 1.5 says this, if any of you lack wisdom, well, hello, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And so one of the things about wisdom, it, it, it's right there to be asked for. It's right there to be asked for as a husband, as a wife, as a couple. Uh, we need to teach our kids, uh, the, the body of Christ right now. We, we need to be seeking God for wisdom, applying the Word of God to our life. It's not knowing the Word. Wisdom is applying the Word. It's walking out, talking out uh, the kingdom, walking out, talking out the Word. And, uh, and so we, we want to talk about that word today. And maybe we can say some things today that might be an answer, uh, you know, to a, to a question that you've had. And so uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So uh, here's, our, here's our first one today. Uh, I just call this the, I uh, heard this years ago. Don't even remember where I heard it from, but it just stuck in me. It, it's the law of the carrot and the stick. The carrot and the stick. You know, uh, when it comes to motivation, we all need to be motivated. You know, we all need reasons. And when it comes to marriage, um, what is the why for having a great marriage? You know, what is the why? What's the purpose? What's your motivation? What's motivating you to put the work in and have a great marriage? Well, one of the things that will help you is understanding the law of the carrot and the stick. So uh, let's talk about the carrot first. You know, when you say carrot and stick, it's, you're kind of going back to an old uh, farm analogy. So, you know, if you've got an animal that you want to motivate to work, well, there's two ways to motivate that animal. First of all, you can reward it. You can give it a carrot. Come on, come with me and give them that carrot. And hopefully the reward uh, will motivate that animal to do what it's supposed to do. But if that carrot don't work, here comes the stick and uh, you start popping that uh, that animal on its on its back end and all of a sudden come on the animal gets to move it now you would rather motivate that animal with reward uh, but if you have to you'll you'll use a stick hey it's the same thing with kids you know <laughs> hey you would rather say hey listen if you'll go clean your room you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll go we'll go get an ice cream later uh, you you would rather you would rather do that but if the ice cream doesn't work, you know, there's something else called a stick. There's something else called a belt. You know, there's something else called, uh, you know, uh, time out. You know, whatever, whatever you want to use, there's the carrot and the stick. Well, let's bring that over into marriage. Let's bring that over into uh, a husband's life or a wife's life. The carrot and the stick. Do you say, well, Brother Phil, what's the carrot? When you put the work in in a marriage, 
you're going to have heaven on earth. You're going to have this great marriage. You're going to have this great life. You're going you're gonna to have a lover. You're going to have a best friend. You're going to have someone that you can go on adventures with. You're going to, heirs together of the grace of life. You can have it all spiritually, physically, uh, fi uh, spiritually, physically, financially. You can, there can be agreement of vision. And you can come together in unity and agreement and go after everything God wants you to have. And you can have this life together that most people will never know. Most people will never know. I mean, just... Just have it all. Great family, great kids, just peace, peace, joy, oh, happiness. Man. Have it all. It's all there for the taking. You can have it, but you've got to put the work in. You're not going to get there by accident. It's got to happen on purpose for a purpose. That's the carrot. That's the carrot. That's God saying, come on, follow after me. Come together. Follow after me. And there's reward, there's reward. I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. But if that don't get the job done, there's always the stick. And for a couple, a husband and wife who don't want to put the work in, they want to be ruled by their emotions, they want to be ruled by uh, hurt and offense and bitterness, and you know, they don't, they're not concerned about getting it right. They want to just be right. There's the stick. And uh, the stick is divorce, an ugly divorce that puts both of you back financially years, uh, takes a big chunk of your time. It hurts the kids. It puts your friends in an uh, awkward situation. It, it, it affects the church that you're a part of. It, 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 it affects your finances. It affects your health because you're dealing with all this anxiety and stress and bitterness and hurt. So physically it has an impact. Spiritually it has an impact because you're going to have to deal with conviction and condemnation and the devil's going to be beating you up over it. And then you're going to have to deal with all the guilt and regret and woulda, shoulda, coulda. And once again, I'm going to say it again, the kids and the awkward situation, it's going to put them in, not for a few months, but for the rest of their life. And if you've been through this, and a lot of you have, I know I'm preaching to the choir. You, you're, you're like, amen, brother. I know what you're talking about. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I get it. Well, one of the things, wisdom, 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 wisdom. It's healthy sometimes to sit back and just get quiet and go, okay, if I put the work in, if we put the work in, if we really make a great marriage a priority, what's the carrot? And just begin to dream. Yeah. Just begin to dream of how great life could be if we put the work in, if we really make a great marriage a, a priority and keep Jesus. Come on, I got my Jesus shirt on. Keep Jesus at the center of it all. But you know what? It's healthy to also think about that stick. Okay, just sit back and go, okay. Worst case scenario, what happens if we don't put the work in? What happens if we just let this thing go sideways? How's it going to affect my life? And start just walking down that road. Feel it. Come on, feel it. Touch it. Taste it. Think about it. Come on, use that imagination that God gave you. What's the worst case scenario? How does it affect you, your wife? How does it affect your kids? How does it affect your church? How does it affect your family? How does it affect, how, how, how does it affect the kingdom? I'm telling you, wisdom is in every situation when you can just take some time and think, ponder, meditate upon the carrot and the stick. I know when I do that, uh, it provides me motivation to keep going uh, in the direction that we need to be going. Well, Amen? It provides perception. Yeah. You know, because sometimes when you're in the middle of something, if right now you're struggling in your marriage and you feel like you're putting in the work or, and they're not or whatever you're going through, and you're looking at that as a divorce as an option, you know, it, you can't, you can't get perspective. That's why it's sitting back. That's why counseling helps to get perspective. Listen, we're pro-counseling. Yeah. If you need counseling, get counseling, get help. And let me say this, we're not advocating anyone to stay into an abusive situation. Right. We are not advocating that at all. And I, I want to make sure that we, that we say Good. that. Yeah. It's very important. If you're in an abusive situation, listen, 
Divorce doesn't have to be the final say, but separation can be a very good thing. Uh, if you need to, for your, the safety of yourself or your children or both, right. you know, separate yourself. Get out of get that out situation. Of, get out of that situation. Sexually, verbally, physically. Yeah. God doesn't expect you to be there being abused. But we live in a world where when something goes wrong, we have, I mean, there's, I'm just going to say it. We've, we, we've got a, a, a microwave generation, a snowflake generation, whatever you want to call it. Somebody hurts your feelings, and then you're just so, oh, you're just so hurt, you're just so hurt, I can't, we can't come back from this, we'll just get a divorce. Mm. And, you know, there's got to be, you, yeah, we're not talking about that either. Yeah, mm. we're not talking about that either. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. that's good. But, so here, so your first piece of wisdom today, think about that carrot and stick. Oh, it, it's, a, it's a good motivator. Hey, uh, every day we have something that goes out all over the world, it's called the Daily Move and uh, people love it. We get feedback every day, uh, and it's just a little email that goes out. It takes about 10, 15 seconds to read. It's about three or four sentences, but it will move you, and it's also free. All you got to do is, is uh, sign up with your name and your email, and so, hey, we'll, we'll share with you how to do that, but check this out, and we'll be back in about 35 seconds. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Path TV. Again, we're Philip and Laura Baker. And uh, hey, I hope you uh, enjoyed that just little small commercial concerning the daily move. All you got to do to get the daily move daily, every day, is just go to our website, philipbaker.org, and sign up. It's right there. As soon as you come up on the website, you'll see sign up daily move. And just click that button, name, email, that's it, free. Tomorrow morning, they'll start coming your way. And I'm telling you, you'll read something and you'll go, oh, that's good. I'm going to think about that today. Yeah. And uh, it'll be a blessing to you. And hey, while you're there on our website, check out our itinerary. Maybe we're coming to a church near you. We're in over 50 churches a year. And we got media there and just all kind of good stuff. And uh, it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, and so today, we're talking about, talking about wisdom, wisdom. Solomon was known as the, as the wisest man that ever lived. Well, you know, he asked for it. James 1.5 says we can ask for wisdom. And if there was ever an hour where we need to be operating in the wisdom of God, it's, it's in this hour, especially in our marriages. And so uh, our little first bit of wisdom, you know, that, that we came across years ago that we just shared with you was the carrot and the stick. You know, there's, there's two motivating factors in life. There's the reward and there's the punishment. Choose reward. Choose reward. But sometimes it's very healthy to think about both. And uh, sometimes it gives you a perspective that, you know what, we're going to put the work in. We're going to have a great marriage and uh, it's going to be good. And so our, little, our second piece of wisdom today, share it with them, babe. It is listen before talking. Listen, one of <laughs> Hard the, to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do. Especially in a heated situation. But listen, learn to listen before you speak. When your spouse comes to you, when you're talking about something, the effective communication, when you have effective communication, first of all, you have undivided attention. You cannot effectively communicate when you're cooking dinner, he's in the other room, you know, they're getting ready to go somewhere. That's not effective communication. Effective communication is one-on-one -on -one and you listening to what they said with empathy. That means you're putting yourself in their place, but most people don't do that when they're discussing something. When right. you use that word discussing. When you're arguing, when you're talking about something, most people are not l really truly in tune and dialed in and listening to what their spouse is saying. They're about halfway listening to what they're saying, but they're getting on the other side, they're getting ready to rebuke, re, rebut yeah, that. Yeah, thinking about what they're about to say. What, what can I say? Because 
no one, I mean, these are the hard conversations. And listen, if you want a good marriage, you're going to have to have the hard conversations. They're not fun. No. They're not no. fun. But you have to have them. You know, if you don't have them, then you just are stuffing things down. They will eventually come back. Yeah. But, you know, grow your marriage. Grow your marriage by intimacy. Intimacy, intimacy is built in this communication when you talk. And when, you, when you're listening to the, your spouse, when you can get that empathy, when you can put yourself in their shoes, because you mostly, most people only see their side of the story. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's always three sides. You know, there's your side, there's your spouse's side, and then there's God's side. Because you, in your mind, you can think, oh, I know she meant to do that to make me mad. And in his mind, oh, I mean, you just, you're, you have built up in your mind that that person intentionally did something to hurt you. But there may be circumstances, there right. may be things that you don't understand. That's why listening is so important. And if you cannot, if they stop and say, honey, what did I just say? And if you can't give that back pretty much word for word, then you're not intently listening. Right. What you're doing is you're listening enough to get so that you, and, and work it on the other side so that you can give your side of the story. Philip said it earlier, some people, they're more concerned with get, being right than they are getting it right. Mm -hmm. You know, effective communication, listening is when, look baby, we've got an issue, I wanna get this right. Mm -hmm. How do I get it right? You get it right by tun tuning into what they're saying, listening to the, to the hurt or the frustration, you know, empathy, that's feeling what they're feeling. Yeah. And when you tune in and you dial into your spouse, first of all, it builds intimacy. It builds trust. Mm -hmm. It builds that relationship. It gets you a little further down the path. And it helps you to understand who they are. Because especially when you're first married, you don't really know the depth of somebody. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing in marriage is you're getting to know that person. And when you build that by listening, then you'll know their heart. And if somebody said, well, your, your spouse did this, or your spouse did that, and you know your spouse, you can say, you know, I bet that wasn't their intention. Let's find yeah. out what happened. Amen. You know, does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, just uh, listening is a skill. You got to yes. develop it. And instead of constantly thinking about what you want to say, spend some time thinking about the question you want to ask. Oh, that's good. And I think the more, the more we all, I mean, we all need to work on it. I mean, I need to work on it. We all need to work on it. Uh, the more questions you ask, the more you understand what's going on. That's and it'll and it'll it'll bring you together. We all need to work on our listening skills uh, with one another because it is a it is a wisdom key to having a great marriage. So number one, come on that that carrot and stick. Number two, uh, let's work on it. Let's listening skills. Number three, uh, say something we want to touch on. You know, there's this uh, you know there's this thought. I don't think people ever. Uh, go out of their way to do it. I think it just happens without them really even knowing it. But what they, people do, number three, is they put their marriage on hold because of the kids. They, they hit pause. And they get to a place in their marriage where it's like, we don't, well, you know, we don't go anywhere. We don't do anything. We don't really talk anymore. We don't go on dates anymore. We don't have sex as much as we used to. Why? Well, we're just so busy with the kids. We just got so much going on. They're, going this way, they're going that way, they're all over the place, and you know, kids first, we gotta put them kids first, and we just, and you know, and so, and you wind up putting your marriage on hold, you wind up putting your marriage on pause, and that's not healthy. You don't wanna do that. Wisdom, 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 wisdom is telling you don't put your marriage on hold for the kids. Your children, no matter how old they are, they need to see your marriage healthy and whole and happy. They need to see you guys having fun. They need to see you guys flirting with one another. They need to see you guys going on dates. They need to see you guys having fun together. They need, they need to see that. Why? So they'll, they know what a great marriage looks like. So when they get married, come on, they, 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 have, a, they have something they can, they can lean on. It's so important that we do not put our marriage on hold because when, when your marriage is healthy and it's whole and it's happy, it provides such joy in the home, peace in the home, and your kids aren't running around worried you guys are going to get a divorce. 
Man, I just really want to encourage you. Don't put your marriage on hold. Uh, make, make your marriage come on first. You know, your relationship with God, of course, He's first, but your marriage, that, that's got to be second. And then, come on, then family, then children. That's priorities. That's the way it should be. That's wisdom. And it's a, when you do that, everybody wins. Absolutely, because you're in it for the long haul, right? And so there is going to come a time, there is going to come a day when your children grow up and they leave. And if you have put your marriage on pause, if you pushed that button and you've done everything for your children and you've just, you know, which is, is wonderful. We want you to do stuff with your children. But if you put your marriage on pause, you push that button, when you unpause that, you may not know who you're looking at. You sit there in the house and you go, well, what do we have in common? Yeah. What do we do? Where do we go? Uh, you know, and so you have to, that's why the empty nest syndrome, they talk about so much. It's very uh. real. It's very real. And you see couples go, well, you know, I was with you for the kids. I, I don't know how much we have in common. And then you start getting restless. If you continue that relationship all the way through and you build that and build that and build that, when the kids leave, it's not like it's a relief, but when the kids leave, you look at it and you go, okay, let's, it's time to do the stuff we want to do. Mm -hmm. It's time to have fun. It's time to go play. It's time to whatever it is that you wanted to do because you, you felt you built that friendship. You've kept that friendship. It's the most important part of your marriage is your friendship. Amen. Amen. Wisdom. You know, when this episode is over, the next time you're, you know, you're in your prayer time, your secret place, before you go to bed tonight, next time you're quiet, sincerely, in the mighty name of Jesus, ask the Father for wisdom. Wisdom to be a great father, wisdom to be a great mom, wisdom to be a parent, wisdom. Ask Him for wisdom. And I'm telling you, if you'll ask from your heart, not out of your head, from your heart, mean what you say, say what you mean, sincerely, humbly, respectfully, ask for wisdom. I'm telling you, God will impart something into your spirit. He'll impart something into your spirit and it'll begin to grow. And then you feed that, feed that, feed that. How do you feed it? Get in the Word, get in the Word, get in the Word. Come on, get, get in that book of Proverbs. Get in the Word, get in the Word. And, uh, all, and you'll start applying the Word like never before and your life will begin to turn around and good things will begin to happen. But it begins with humbly asking. And I want to really encourage you to do that. Hey, we're going to talk about wisdom a little bit more on our next episode, so don't miss it. Hey, remember the Daily Move over at our website. And if you're out there and you go, man, I like these, uh, I like these paths. Where, where can I watch them? Well, it's okay. We got you. Just go over to our YouTube channel. It's PBM Phillips Space Baker. And all of the episodes are there. Make sure and subscribe and hit that bell. And the next time we download, which is every week, upload another episode, you'll get a notification. And uh, you can just hang with us as we travel down the path. And so, uh, man, we're just really... Uh, Appreciate you hanging out with us. And as always, man, we'd like to ask you to pray about partnering with the ministry. Uh, go over to our website, philip.baker.org, and just hit donate. No way in the world we can do all we do. Nations, churches, our books, The Daily Move, The Path TV, without the incredible partners, churches, businesses, people that partner with Philip Baker Ministries. Hey, we love you. God bless you. And uh, we'll see you next time on The Path TV.